Mr. President, I rise today to join with my colleague, Senator Paul, to discuss the life and work of an exceptional American, Dr. Sandy Greenberg, who is here with us today in the Senate gallery, along with his wife, Sue, and his sister, Brenda, even as we speak. Sandy, in my view, is an honorary Delawarean because he spends a month out of every year at one of our most beautiful Delaware beaches, Rehoboth Beach. But he's much more than that. A successful businessman and philanthropist, Sandy has a wide variety of interests and life experiences. He's founded and run software and technology companies. He's a pioneer in the use of technology in medicine and helped bring telemedicine to rural health care facilities as chairman of the Rural Health Care Corporation. He was appointed by President Clinton to the board of the National Science Foundation. And as a young man, he took a break from his studies at Columbia, where he roomed with Art Garfunkel, a well-known musician, to work as a fellow in Lyndon Johnson's White House. All of this, Mr. President, would on its own merits make for a life well-lived and a substantive, meaningful contribution to our country. But there is one thing I have not yet mentioned. At the young age of 19, Sandy went blind. He lost his sight, and with that, all likely hope of a successful completion of his college career or a successful career in life. He was told by the social workers who met with him after glaucoma stole his sight from him that his future would likely consist of assembling screwdriver kits in a sheltered workshop in his hometown in upstate New York. But it's because of the kindness and the intervention of his roommates, Art Garfunkel and Jerry Spire and others who volunteered, uh, Mark Mukasey, who dedicated countless hours to reading to him, to allowing him to finish his classwork and to be successful in completing his studies at Columbia and then go on to Harvard Law School and then to Oxford and then to go further and further. He's lived his entire adult life and achieved a career most of us can only dream of while also plunged in darkness. His exceptional courage and his perseverance don't end there. Today, he wants to serve others and catalyze a transformative shift in the health of our nation by ending blindness by the end of this decade. Is this, out, is this outrageous? Is this audacious? Maybe. But that's what experts said when President Kennedy stood before this Congress, when President Kennedy in the same year, 1961, that Sandy lost his sight, stood before this Congress and challenged our nation to put a man on the moon by the end of that decade. The best and brightest minds, the top scientists and researchers of President Kennedy's generation rose to that challenge and achieved his impossible dream. Now for this generation, Sandy and his wife Sue have once again raised our sights and challenged the best scientific and medical researchers in the world to rise to an enormous challenge, a challenge that's been with us from the beginning of mankind. In the Bible itself, we hear of blindness, of people who cannot see with their eyes but only their hearts for millennia. Humanity has struggled to understand and to overcome blindness. And yet today, we have the scientific tools necessary to reach for a cure to restore the physical sight so many of us take for granted to those who otherwise live in darkness, to bring to the light the 39 million people in this world who live without sight, many in the world's poorest countries at a time when experts already believe 80% of blindness can be prevented or cured. We know we can do it. Just think of what an awe-inspiring accomplishment this would be. What a triumph of the human mind, of individual initiative, of collaborative effort of the scientific method of modern technology and of our investment in the belief that America can and should be a world leader in curing the diseases that have ailed humanity for generations. Mr. President, a majority of all research scientists in human history are alive today. That remarkable fact alone carries with it great potential. That's why Sandy and his wife Sue created the prize to end blindness by 2020 to take advantage of this incredible historic opportunity to bring together scientists and researchers and end blindness by the end of this decade. To inspire them, the Greenbergs have provided a prize of more than $2 million in gold. Why gold? Well, it's a reminder of the color of the beautiful shimmering sunsets that Sandy and Susan enjoyed together 
in the waning days of Sandy's sightedness. And it is a reminder of the beauty, of the challenge, of a prize to restore to sight the millions who live in blindness. Mr. President, I'm no expert on the health or science of the eye, but we are blessed to have in this United States Senate two members who are. We had some supportive comments that will be submitted for the record by Senator Bozeman of Arkansas, but I'm particularly glad and honored to be joined today by Senator Paul, by Dr. Paul, who is not only a tireless advocate for the people of Kentucky, but who by professional training and background is an ophthalmologist. And I'd like to yield the floor to him at this time. Senator Paul. Senator from Kentucky. Thank you, uh, Senator Coons, for inviting me both figuratively and literally across the aisle to join you on the side. I'm glad to be here today and for introducing me to uh, this prize that Sandy Greenberg has brought forward to end blindness. I'm an eye surgeon, have also done research in glaucoma, and have been a, a longtime member of Lions Club International whose primary uh, research and primary goal is the prevention of blindness. One of the heroes to the Lions Eye Movement and to our work worldwide on blindness has been Helen Keller, who at the age of 19 months lost not only her vision but her hearing. In 1925, she came to the Lions Club International with this mandate, and this is part of her speech from that day. She wrote... You have heard how, through a little word dropped from the fingers of another, a ray of light from another soul touched the darkness of my mind, and I found myself, found the world, found God. It is because my teacher learned about me and broke through the dark, silent imprisonment which held me that I am able to work for others and for others. It is the caring we want more than the money. The gift without the sympathy... An interest of the giver is empty. If you care, if we can make the people of this great country care, the blind will indeed triumph over blindness. The opportunity I bring to you, Lions, is this, to foster and sponsor the work of the American Foundation for the Blind. Will you not help me hasten the day when there shall be no preventable blindness, no little deaf blind child untaught, no blind man or woman unaided? There's a long history, both in our country and in other countries around the world, of private philanthropy and these prizes. Going back to the early 18th century, there was a prize for longitude. The Harrisons, father and son, worked for nearly 40 years to develop a clock to precisely measure where they were on the earth, to measure longitude. We currently have something called the X Prize, which gave money last year to a company that developed a technology to speed up the cleanup of oil in the ocean after BP's disaster. Siemens Foundation gives a $100,000 prize and was given last year to a 17-year-old girl from California who developed a nanoparticle that with a chemotherapy agent goes directly to treat tumors. A prize from Siemens was also given to a 15-year-old Benjamin Clark who won the prize for his work in How Stars Are Born. I love the idea, and I think it's underappreciated of private philanthropy. So today I'm happy to be here with you to congratulate Sandy Greenberg for putting forward this prize, and I hope that it will bring some results. I really think that there are, within our grasp, the ability to treat and hopefully prevent blindness. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator Paul. And for the record, I ask unanimous consent to enter into a colloquy with my colleague from Kentucky. Without objection, the Senator from Kentucky and Delaware are authorized to enter into colloquy. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, it, it certainly hasn't escaped the expert knowledge of my colleagues uh, here today um, that 2020, the date of the prize, of the Sue and Sandy prize that we've spoken about, is also um, the numerical indication of perfect vision. So the 2020 prize, the goal to end blindness by 2020, which is what the Sandy and Sue Greenberg Prize is calling us towards, is also a year on the calendar, a year just over seven years away. And in those seven years, Sandy Greenberg has the courage, the audacity, the strength to believe that we can end blindness working together, end blindness by 2020. It's a goal that could transform our society, our world, and the lives of millions who live in darkness today. We can do it. 
At earlier times in our history, as Senator Paul was just reflecting, we've come together in response to audacious goals or inspiring prizes to conquer other debilitating diseases, one that Sandy Greenberg shared with me when we sat in person and first talked about this, was polio, a crippling disease that struck terror into the hearts of parents every summer. Dr. Jonas Salk convinced medical researchers and charities like the March of Dimes to instead turn their focus from treatment with devices like the iron lung to ending the disease itself. Because of that kind of forward thinking, polio has now been largely eradicated and does not threaten children in the United States, although it remains in a few isolated outposts around the world. We can see even more cutting edge examples right now today in my home state of Delaware. Just earlier this week, I met with scientific researchers, Dr. Kamek from Delaware State University and the leaders of a company called Orphigenics that is taking on the audacious goal of ending sickle cell anemia. That particular effort, banishing this disease from bodies around the world through research and development, is something supported by a public-private partnership. In the end, private contributions, extraordinary generosity by Sandy and Sue Greenberg and his family are critically important. I happen to believe there's also a vital role for a partnership with the National Institutes of Health, the Centers for Disease Control, and others that have unique abilities to bring researchers together, hopefully for efficient and effective advances in medicine. So, as the great disability rights advocate Helen Keller once said, just to continue the citations of this great forerunner, alone we can do little, together we can do so much. Even in this area, even in this era of austerity, these times of budget crunching and belt tightening, in my view there's few areas more important for our sustained investment than the development of treatments and cures for devastating, life-changing health conditions like blindness. And in my view, Mr. President, there's also a pressing economic element to this humanitarian equation. Economists have said that most of the new wealth created in this country in the last century came from biomedical research and its application to fighting, changing the human condition. They've told us that curing and treating ancient diseases and conditions is a lot of what's driven the extraordinary economic growth of this country in the last century. So we know that when we as a nation invest in making possible cutting edge advances, Interconnected networks of learning make possible the next gigantic leap. And I am so grateful to Sue and Sandy for making possible this challenge, for putting out this pot of gold to literally lift the sights of teams all over the world, of individuals, of communities of effort. It is an effort that could literally bring sight to the blind. Senator Paul, any closing thoughts today? Well, I think what's great about the prize is that it doesn't set a short and limited goal. It really goes for the whole thing. They want to prevent and cure blindness. I think we need more big thinking. We need to talk about, let's cure diabetes. You know, let's cure AIDS. Sometimes it takes incremental approach, but sometimes it takes a big, grand, or bold vision. You mentioned Dr. Salk, and in the early days with the polio vaccine, some actually died from the vaccine. He had to move forward despite some obstacles and despite some setbacks. Originally, the whole idea of vaccination came from a, a Dr. Boylston in Boston back in the preceding the time of our Revolutionary War. And there it was a live vaccine taken from the, the actual pustules of someone who had smallpox, a lancet stuck into the pustule, and then a, a cut in the, un, the person who did not have smallpox and give them the disease. You tried to give them a mild variant of this. For this, Dr. Boylston was hounded through the streets, mobs came to his house, and the person he chose to vaccinate first were his kids. Wow. That took a really bold step forward to vaccinate his kids. His kids survived, and uh, the rest is history. George Washington had his family inoculated. Back in the time of the Revolutionary War, more people died from communicable disease than died from actual bullets. This was true in most wars up until this century. So I think it takes bold vision, and I think uh, Sandy Greenberg has, will help to move this along with this prize. I love the idea of incentives. We're a country built on incentives. Now, I don't think any scientist is going to jump forward and say, I'm doing it only for the prize. But prizes don't hurt. And we should acknowledge that these scientists who can come forward and may come forward with a great, uh, with a great cure um, should be rewarded for that. And so uh, I would just like to thank Sandy Greenberg and his family for setting up this prize. And I hope that out of this, uh, some great good will come for those who have gone blind in prevention. Thank you, Senator Paul. Um, I, like you, am confident that some great good will come out of this. 
out of this bold vision, out of this clear initiative, as we look forward at the health care debates that have raged throughout this chamber and this country in the last few years, I'll simply say in closing this, as we look to the future for the United States, there's a path forward that says that the right way to deal with skyrocketing health care costs and the fiscal challenges that they provide is to simply crunch down, to limit and to narrow and to cut off access and to manage downwards. And a competing and I think more compelling and frankly more American view is to say we should take bold risks. We should innovate. We should dare to speak of curing diseases that are immensely harmful and expensive that are challenges and burdens for our whole country and the world. And this prize, this challenge from Sue and Sandy Greenberg is something that I think should lift the sights of all of us in this country to the very real possibilities of working together to find exceptional cures. So, Mr. President, thank you for letting us speak today about this extraordinary American, his wife and his family, and his quest to end blindness by the end of this decade. I'd urge anyone interested in this topic and interested in working with us further to visit the website, endblindnessby2020.com, and to thank Sandy and Sue Greenberg for their courage, their perseverance, and their commitment to bringing light to millions of their fellow men and women around the globe. Thank you.